This is the Murray River town of Echuca on the Victorian border. Echuca's historic association with its natural environment is well documented. Even today, the town's economy, due to tourism, is largely dependent on its connection with the Murray River. But in 2011, it was another natural resource, solar energy, that brought economic and social benefits to the town. Echuca's local hospital services a population of 14,000 people. During the summer months when Echuca's average temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius, patient care at the hospital becomes particularly reliant on the air conditioning system. So when the system was due for a major upgrade recently, hospital management looked at all of its options. Solar energy was one of them. Mark Hooper is the Regional Engineering Services Manager at Echuca Regional Health. We got the idea to do a solar cooling project because we had uh, limitations in our electrical infrastructure and we needed to find another way of reducing our side electricity without upgrading our main switchboard and solar fitted beautifully uh, on this site. Solar power was an obvious alternative energy source for the hospital. After all, Echuca enjoys good annual sunshine. But large-scale solar cooling technology is a relatively new concept. The design and engineering team faced a number of challenges. Engineering firm WSP Lincoln Scott was engaged to assist with the design and implementation of the project. We were slightly concerned that obviously this was unique. Uh, it hadn't been done before. There are a couple of other installations that have been done of solar using solar thermal power, uh, but obviously not using this type of technology. Um, so we obviously had a little bit to lean on. It's not like we were pioneering or breaking new ground. We were just using existing methods in a different way or existing systems in a, in a unique and different way that maybe haven't been utilized in the past. The issue for us really came down to control and as, as I was trying to explain to, to our engineers, it really is how do you control an uncontrolled boiler? When the sun comes out, the solar panels warm up, they produce an awful lot of heat very, very quickly. And we don't have any control over that. The only time we know it won't work is when it's dark. And so the problem really comes down to one of control and, and how we integrate that heat and use it when the hospital needs it, not when the sun gives it to us. These types of tubes are evacuated tubes, so they're under negative pressure, which means they absorb energy from the sun much better than just the standard tube at atmospheric pressure and the heat energy from the sun um, lands on the fins within the tube and the energy that the sun puts into those tubes runs up into the collector up in the top which heats the water going past. There's no hydraulic connection between the tube and the top so we could break a tube or pull one out and the system will keep running. The solution to the problem really was, was to find different ways of using the heat. The absorption chiller wasn't always going to need cooling from need to provide cooling to the hospital. So we had to find somewhere else we could put that heat when the chiller didn't need it. So we installed tanks that would give us a bit of, give us a buffer and allow us to store the energy when the chiller doesn't require it. The hospital being a hospital has operating theatres, it has quite a large requirement for hot water. So we were able to integrate the system with the operating theatres and the tanks and the chiller. That gives us three ways of using the heat and therefore we're able to call that heat and use it and control it properly rather than have the issues of it uh, just going to waste. The energy from the solar field above us ends up down here in the absorption chiller machine which converts that heat energy into chilled water. The chilled water then goes into the pumping system which goes to one, two and three buildings around us. Um, in the event that there's no cooling required for those buildings, we also have a hot water system below. We can take the same energy and put that into our hot water system. If the heating and cooling requirements aren't there but we have a sunny day, the energy from the solar field can go into the tanks, which are full of water, where we can heat that water and use that later on to put into cooling or heating. These outcomes were the result of a project which only took 10 months to implement from its conception. Sustainability Victoria was a major partner in the project. Sustainability Victoria helped us financially with this project. So the funding stream, the design 
and the people at Sustainability Victoria basically gave us the ability to put the project together and without them we wouldn't have been able to do that. And in conjunction with them and the Department of Health, our engineering department was able to build this system. Sustainability Victoria were an integral part of the project. Um, they provided a significant part of the funding and um, they were also very useful to us in terms of uh, being able to bounce ideas off and really sense checking the design that, that we were putting together. Um, we did a number of things on the project that weren't normal for, uh, for engineering and I think we, we stretched them as, as much as they stretched us in a lot of cases but they were very very good good to us and for us as an organisation. The project that uh, Sustainability Victoria have put forward uh, has had a very positive outcome for our office. Uh, I think it's encouraged a lot of our younger engineers and a lot of the other senior staff that a project of this nature can be done, that it's not just a dream and having very good results coming out of it, some that have been exceeded our expectation uh, has been a very positive outcome for our firm and uh, I believe for Sustainability Victoria too that this is a positive outcome for the community of Echuca and will possibly or will dictate to future developments.